What's up everybody, this is John with John Fair Innovations bringing you another math lesson. So today I'm going to explain to you what a quadratic is and how to factorise one. Now before I get to the video, if you enjoy it, do make sure you hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment on maybe another math topic you'd like me to tackle, and if you really enjoy the video, do make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stay up to date for the videos as they come out. Now in previous lessons we learned about equations of a straight line. And this, of course, is when we have a graph and it has a nice, beautiful straight line, whether it goes in the positive or the negative direction. Quadratics are a little bit different. What happens in a quadratic is a curve occurs. Again, this can be in the positive and the negative direction. But what happens is, is that we can have potentially up to two x-intercepts. So it crosses our x-intercept, uh, our x-axis potentially twice. And it's because of this is that we have to sort of look at it a little bit differently than we do, say, the equation of a straight line. Now, all quadratics follow the formula next to me, which is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And strictly speaking, we set it to zero because having it this way, we can actually solve it and we can solve things like the x-intercept, for example. Um, now, our a, our b, and our c are all real numbers. So these are all constants. And B and C can be any value at all. A can be any value except zero. Now the reason is, if you multiply something by zero, it's gonna cancel it out. And the biggest distinguished factor of a quadratic is this X to the power of two. Having this X to the power of two is what creates a curve. We can have uh, zero of X to the power of one component. We can have zero as our C component. And we would still have a curve if we have x to the power of 2, whether it's a positive or a negative, uh, in the positive or negative direction. So this x to the power of 2 is one of the most important parts of our quadratic formula. Now, when we're looking at it, it's actually working from x to the power of 2 all the way down to x to the power of 0. So your first one has x to the power of 2, which is x multiplied by x. Your second one has x to the power of 1, which is just x. And remember, in mathematics, anything to the power of 1 is just itself. And because of this, we don't bother writing the little one, uh, the little one power of. And our last one, our constant, is x to the power of... It's actually being multiplied by x to the power of 0. Now, the thing is, with x to the power of 0, any number to the power of 0 is, in fact, 1. And so that's why we don't see an x component on the end here, because it'd be just multiplying by 1. But as you can see, we're, going, we're working from x to the power of 2 all the way down to x to the power of 0. And with this, what we can do is we can create nice, beautiful curves. So let's, for example, plug in that a equals 1, b equals 5, and c equals 4. Well, plugging this into our formula for our um, quadratic, which was a x squared plus bx plus c equals 0, what we'd now read as x squared, because remember we don't bother writing anything to, um, times one, because it's just itself. So x squared plus five x plus four equals zero. And it would look something like what I've got next to me here, where we've got a curve and it's intersecting the x axis twice. So that's basically how you would sort of interpret when you see a quadratic when we're looking at our a, our b, and our c, is what we're looking at the factors that are multiplying our x to the power of 2, our x to the power of 1, and our x to the power of 0. So let's say, for example, we take this quadratic. We've got x to the power of 2 plus 5x plus 4 equals 0. Um, and we want to sort of factorise it. Factorising these is going to be one of the main things you do with quadratics. Because when we factorize a quadratic that's equal to zero, what actually happens is, is because of this x to the power of two, it creates two sums that are multiplying one another, and we can use this to easily determine our x-intercepts. So there is a little shortcut that we can actually do to factorize. So we've got our a x squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and we wanna get it into the form of a bracket x plus k1, close bracket, multiplied by x plus k2, close bracket, equals 0. Where k1 and k2 are just any potential numbers that are that we would use in order to factorise it. 
So this could be one, this could be negative 50. We, what, that's what we're going to determine by factorizing it. But when we factorize it, what will happen is, is that if we use say distributable for example, and we multiply it out, we would get the original uh, quadratic that we had. So if we were trying to factorize x to the power of two plus five x plus four equals zero, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create two uh, little sums that are multiplying one another that if we use distributive law would expand out to be the exact same thing. And k1 and k2, as I said, can be any constant. It, at times it can actually be zero as well. So if you do find that you, you're getting uh, x plus zero, that's perfectly fine as well. The only time where you're not gonna be able to get a zero is for a, because as I said, that would cancel out your x squared. And the cool thing about the uh, quadratics is that they have a beautiful relationship within this. So if we look at our x plus k1, close bracket, uh, multiplied by x plus two, uh, k2, close bracket, what actually happens is, is if we put this back into our original equation, what we find is, is that if we have k1 plus k2, that will equal whatever our b value is. And if we go k1 multiplied by k2, that will give us whatever our c value is. So because of this, we can actually use this shortcut in order to factorize. So we've got our b equaling five, and we've got our c equaling four. And generally speaking, I always work with the C value first when I'm doing the shortcut because it's easier to work out the multiples of a, parti a particular number as opposed to working out all the additions of one number. So we've got here that C equals four. So let's look at the potential ways we could have C equaling positive four by having two numbers multiplying. So we could have one multiplied by four, for example. We could have four multiplied by one. It's the same thing. We could have two multiplied by two, that would give us four. And we could also have negative one multiplied by negative four, and that would also give us four. So these are our three options. We've got four multiplied by one, we've got two multiplied by two, and we've got negative one multiplied by negative four. So one of these three has to be our potential factorizing, assuming we can factorize it, that is. In this case, we definitely can, because otherwise I wouldn't have picked it. <laughs> so now we look at our B, and we look at these two numbers, if we add them together, would equal b. So let's look at uh, two multiplied by two. Well, two plus two would give me four, but b equals five, so that one's not gonna work. Well, what if we went negative one plus negative four? Well, negative one plus negative four would give me negative five. Again, our b is positive five, so this one doesn't work. But we do have four multiplied by one. Uh, which gave us four, and four plus one gives us five. So this actually fits our, our two uh, sums. It fits that when we add them together, it will equal b, so one plus four will give me five, and one multiplied by four will give me four, which is what c equals. So these have to be our k1 and our k2. And because they're both positive, it doesn't matter which ones, which order that you do it in. So for example, you could factorize this out to be x plus one close bracket multiplied by x plus four uh, close bracket equals zero. And this would tell you your x-intercepts because now all you have to do is, if you look at it, well think about it. When you're equaling something by multiplying uh, two things, one of them has to equal zero, don't they? And we remember as well that when we're trying to find our x-intercepts, this is when y equals zero. So in this case, what we're looking at is one of these brackets will have to equal zero. So there's gonna be two possible scenarios. So if we look at the first one, we've got x plus one. We had k1 as equaling one. So if we have x plus one equals zero, what value would I need to plus one that would give me zero? Well, that would be negative one. So our first intercept is when x equals negative one because zero multiplied by whatever happens in the second one, I don't even have to put it into the, to the next part because whatever that is, it doesn't matter because I'm multiplying by zero. And now I do the exact same when I look at the second bracket. So we've got x plus four equals zero. Well, what number plus four would give me zero? That's gonna be negative four because negative four plus four would give me zero. And again, I don't even have to bother worrying about what's in the other bracket because zero multiplied by that is going to give me zero. 
So our second x-intercept is going to be when x equals negative 4. So there you have it. We've talked a little bit about quadratics. We looked at the quadratic, for, um, the quadratic equation. And then we've also taken a quadratic and we factorized it in order to solve its x-intercepts. So quite a lot in 10 minutes. But hopefully you enjoyed that. Do practice this yourself. Um, do put it on graphs as well, because graphs honestly do help you sort of have a visual explanation of what you're actually seeing. But always stay safe, be kind to one another, and I'll see you next time.